Hi, today I'm going to show you how this toilet fill valve works. Now, obviously, when the float goes down, the valve comes on. When the float's up, the valve stops. I'm not going to show you that. I'm going to show you the internals of the valve and how this little moving rod moves probably not even a quarter of an inch. And this rubber seal, how they do their magic. Okay, let's start with this rubber seal. I cut it in half, and here's a cutaway view of it. So what I want to do is magnify this and look at just the channel that goes through the center of that seal. I've outlined that channel in yellow so you can see the profile a little bit better. And you can see that there's some thicker areas and some thinner areas. And those are very critical in the operation of this valve. And we'll see how that works here momentarily. And here's another picture of the valve and I'm showing the valve stem next to it. And now let's insert this valve stem into the seal. And as that valve stem goes up and down, there's going to be certain areas that are sealed against water flow and other areas where water is able to flow. And that's how this seal and valve stem operate together. Now you'll notice two little blue lines going out from near the top of that seal. Those are holes in the seal. Let's go back to this cutaway of the seal. And you can see right in the center of that upper portion of the seal, there's a hole right in the, and as I put my finger, you can see my finger blocking off the light. And there's two holes. You can see the two halves of this. There's a hole in each half. And those holes are also critical in the operation of this fill valve. Okay, so here's the valve stem again. And I've created one in red, just so you can see the profile of it a little bit better. And you can see that there's a thin area on that valve stem. And the actual picture of a valve stem is there to the left. Okay, here's another picture of the valve stem. And if you look real closely on the right side and then close to the center, there's a fluted area where there's basically some ridges cut out of that valve stem. And these are paths for water to flow depending on the position of the valve stem in that seal. And those fluted areas are also critical to the operation of this fill valve. Okay, let's open up this fill valve and look at the inside of it. You can see some holes down in the bottom of the fill valve. It's actually at the top, but looking down towards the bottom. This center hole is where the water flows up from the water line connected to the fill valve. And then this blue ring marks the holes where the water flows back down and fills the toilet tank. In this picture, you can see on the right, there's a darker blue area. That's the part of the valve where the water flows up from the water line up to the top of the valve. And then the outer part of the tube, which I show here in light blue, is where the water will flow back down, and that's what fills the tank. And I've circled over on the left the part of the fill valve that we're talking about here. Let's take another look at this real fill valve. The water will flow into the bottom. It'll flow up the center tube up here, it'll turn around and come back down the outside part of that tube. And from right here along the bottom is where it will flow out and fill up the tank. Let me zoom in just a little bit. And you can see right here is where the water comes back out to fill the tank. So with the valve open, you can see that there's a space under there for the water to go from the center of the tube to the outer part of the tube. And then with the valve closed, the water can't flow past that center tube. Let's look at a close-up of the upper part of the fill valve. So you've got the seal in there, and you can see the, the, what I've labeled the valve channel that goes right through the center of the seal, and I've highlighted the channel in yellow. And then I also show the inner tube, which brings water up to the top of the fill valve, and then the outer part, which takes the water back down to the fill tube. And I also show the two holes that go through the seal. Now let's add the valve stem to the picture. And you can see that because of the thickness of the valve stem in different places, and also the thickness of the opening in the channel, depending on where the stem is positioned, it's going to either block flow or allow flow. Now let's get to how this whole thing operates together. So here's a diagram of the, the valve in the closed position. And above that valve, you've got water that's pressurized to the pressure of the water system. And the water gets up there by going through the fluted area of the stem, then up uh, through the passage in the channel between the channel and the stem, and then out those little blue holes, or at least the holes I've highlighted in blue. And that's how that water pressure is maintained on top of the valve to push 
or force the valve closed and to keep it in the closed position. So now let's see what happens when the toilet's flushed. Well, first thing that's gonna happen is as the water starts dropping, the float's gonna lower and that's gonna cause the stem to raise. Now, as the stem raises, that's gonna open up a path for the water to flow between the stem and the channel. So the pressurized water is gonna go from outside this seal through these little holes up into the channel and then it's gonna basically squirt out the top of the valve which I illustrate here. And we can also look at an actual demonstration on my toilet. You can see as I flush the toilet, watch right here where this arrow is. You see this water squirting right there. That's the pressure being relieved above the seal. Okay, so as the pressure is relieved, then we now have low pressure above the seal and that allows the pressure below the seal to cause the seal to raise up and it allows water to start flowing from this, the inlet to basically the outletter where it will start filling the tank. Then when the tank gets filled up, the float's gonna rise and this is gonna cause the stem to drop. And that puts into motion several things that happen very quickly, but I've illustrated them very slowly. Let me show you. With the stem in the down position, the water flow out the top of that channel is now blocked. But as water flows up through the channel, and you can see the path it takes, and at the bottom where the stem is, remember it's fluted or it has grooves in it. And this allows water to flow up between the stem and the channel. And it flows up into that channel and then through the small holes in the seal. And it fills the space above the seal and starts building up pressure. And that's going to cause the seal to be pushed downward and to close. An important thing to note here is with this seal in the down position, water is still able to go up between that stem and the channel and out through those blue holes and to maintain that space above the seal pressurized and to keep that seal closed essentially forever. One important thing to note here is that once the valve is closed, you have the same pressure above the seal as you do below the seal. So if there are equal pressures, why does the seal stay closed? The answer is simple. Even if the pressure is the same, the force above the seal is greater than the force below the seal. This is because there's a larger surface area above the sill than there is below the sill. Remember, force is equal to pressure times area. I've marked the surface areas above and below the sill in yellow. It's obvious that there's a much larger area above the sill, so the force above the sill will be correspondingly larger. So with this channel through the sill, the pressure of the water system will be maintained above and below the sill, and this valve will remain closed essentially forever, or at least until the toilet is flushed again. So that's the magic behind these toilet fill valves. That's how this small silver valve stem and that small black rubber seal work together to make your toilet work properly. The system is not perfect and these fill valves do go bad. The seals can start leaking. I do have separate videos on how to replace just that black rubber seal. And I also have a video on how to replace the entire fill valve. I hope this video has been helpful to you. I really do appreciate you watching. If you don't mind, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like learning things like this, please subscribe to my channel. I make new videos like this regularly. Thanks again for watching. Have a wonderful day.